I should give you a warning. Uh, this this uh, talk will discuss uh, IPFS running in Kubernetes, so if that causes you to wince in pain, uh, I understand. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, this, this is a talk about uh, IPFS operator. Um, IPFS operator is uh, a Kubernetes operator, uh, which I will explain, uh, but in, in brief, it's a way to uh, manage uh, IPFS uh, and, and also IPFS cluster uh, in like a smart, easy to use way uh, on Kubernetes. So uh, yeah, we're, we're actually trying to target Kubernetes uh, as the as the an installation, and, and uh, you know like le leverage some of its benefits. Okay, this is the agenda for the talk. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna explain uh, who is it, uh, why would you do this, uh, and also uh, I'll, I'll give a little explanation of how it works, uh, and I'll uh, go over the run, run uh, excuse me the roadmap and uh, some of the pain points uh, that uh, still exist. Uh, this is the team. This is who is working on it currently. Uh, myself, Corey, uh, uh, Hector, uh, who presented earlier on uh, IPFS cluster itself. Uh, this is being uh, developed uh, in conjunction with uh, Red Hat. Uh, so we have two uh, people from Red Hat Emerging Te Technologies who have been uh, really helping us uh, to develop this thing. Uh, OK. <laughs> uh, before we get started, I want to I want to give a little bit of context. Uh, I just put ten seconds up there. Uh, what is Kubernetes? I, I feel like I, I just need a little bit of explanation. Uh, in brief, it's a uh, it's a cluster operating system. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's uh, a way to basically like get your applications running, and there uh, there's uh, like an API that will let you manage things in an abstract way. Uh, so uh, load balancers, managing your storage, and managing workloads, things like that are uh, sort of like wrapped up into this uh, common API. Uh, and uh, another, thing, another reason why this is a good target that makes it so popular is that it is, uh, it's ubiquitous. Every uh, cloud provider that you can think of, they probably have a Kubernetes implementation, uh, and you can take your Kubernetes applications and run, and run them there. Um, Okay, <laughs> uh, market share. Uh, I wanted to add this here just because I wanted to give an explanation for why Kubernetes is a great target. Uh, like 3.9 million developers, that, uh, that is a huge amount. Uh, if you're thinking like who, uh, you know, who's running uh, Kubernetes, the answer is it's everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 31% of uh, backend developers globally are using Kubernetes, uh, but uh, and we want to ma make this a, uh, a target where they can run IPFS. Uh, so that brings us to really the, the uh, quintessential question. Uh, if you are one of these people, which is everybody, <laughs> who is running uh, Kubernetes, uh, what do you do when you read about something cool uh, like IPFS? How can you explore IPFS? Um, I would bet that there are probably in this room, uh, you know, half of you could probably come up with a, a, a decent implementation. But the thing is that we are very familiar with IPFS, and my guess is that uh, if we w that uh, the implementation that we would come up with, we would struggle quite a bit. So anybody that's just a, a standard, you know, bog standard uh, Web two developer that's running their own like application, if they want to, if they wanted to run IPFS. Uh, they're going to really have a bad time. So um, I, I think we can. I think we can make that a little bit better. <laughs> and so that's the reason why uh, Kubernetes is a good target, and uh, developing an IPFS is a, a really uh, good idea. Okay, <laughs> so running on IPFS. I, I've got a little GIF here, but I just want to kind of show what it looks like live. So uh, the way this works. Uh, let me let me open up. Uh, Collab. Let's say you want to run a collab cluster. Uh, there are there's excellent documentation on the IPFS cluster website. It involves setting up, uh, you know, new peer IDs, generating you know random data, and using that to to generate keys. Uh, you know, like SSHing into a bunch of boxes and like causing them to join each other. Uh, we can make this easier on Kubernetes. Uh, basically, just I have this uh, really simple like template here that you can just simply follow. Uh, so the way that you would create a uh, IPFS cluster in a Kubernetes world, 
kubectl apply. Let me let me do the other one. Uh, cluster one hundred. And there you go. It's created. Uh, it, it's not actually created, but it's just doing work in the background. I'm going to come back to this later. This is going to be like a big surprise where we're going to be like, oh, there's a while we were talking, a Kubernetes uh, run uh, collab or cluster was uh, formed. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, running on Kubernetes, the the takeaway is that it's easy. Like you just saw me do it in one command. It's easier to set it up. If you're somebody that's already familiar with Kubernetes, then setting up the, the cluster using an operator like this uh, is easier even than setting it up you know, like manually, like following the instructions. Um, uh, yeah, so per, yeah, particularly for people who uh, already are familiar with Kubernetes, the learning curve on this is, you know, it's one command. It's, it's something that they're already familiar with. Um, OK. Uh, the other the other point of context, uh, what is an operator? Uh, if you're familiar with Kubernetes but you haven't actually run it yourself, you might not be familiar with what an operator actually is. Uh, an operator, in brief, is uh, a method for extending the Kubernetes API to add additional functionality. So uh, you can it's a piece of code that you can run in the cluster. Uh, it has access to uh, like create things, uh, but um, you can add your custom logic to it. So what I was talking about, like creating uh, cryptographic keys and like creating cluster secret and all that stuff, all that can be done in the operator. Uh, you don't have to like even know that it's happening or know that it exists. Uh, and uh, that, that custom resource, that's that file that we just defined. You can basically define like a, an API object, upload it, uh, and it'll be handled by our custom code. Uh, yeah, so this, this is this is going over what we are, what we just went over. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I've got I've got this IPFS object here. I'm basically saying that I want to create a uh, collab cluster in this case, uh, and I want to follow these things. Uh, if you're if you're paying attention, you'll notice that this is all of the collab clusters uh, that are uh, on the like IPFS uh, collab cluster uh, collab website. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> This is what the this is what the operator is doing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now we're at the now we're at the section. We know what an, uh, what an operator is. Uh, now we're going to talk about this particular operator. Uh, so um, these are components that get created. Uh, this uh, it, this is the, this is basically a layout of what the pod looks like. Uh, in Kubernetes, a pod is basically like a unit of work. Uh, it's essentially like a bunch of pieces of software that run. Uh, in a way that like they have the same networking. So typically, when you set up IPFS cluster, uh, as Hector uh, described earlier, uh, you have an IPFS node, or excuse me, a Kubo node, uh, and you have uh, IPFS cluster that runs next to it and talks to the local node. Here we did the same thing. We're we're not doing anything uh, fancy here. We're just uh, you know like making Kubernetes wrappers around it basically. So we have an IPFS node. It, that IPFS node has some block storage attached to it. Uh, and we have a cluster service that is able to talk to it on you know 127.0.0.1. Uh, anybody that's run an IPFS cluster, this will look very, really normal. Uh, this is this is something that was actually a, it was a pain point. <laughs> we fixed it now. Um, this is this is all this is something that I think uh, anybody that was not familiar with uh, libp2p and IPFS would. Uh, struggle with. This would be something that uh, is not very obvious. Uh, the, basically, once you create this pod, you've got some sort of local IP address. It's not really very obvious how you can uh, achieve like external dialability. Uh, do you, yeah, I, I, put some, I put some examples of things that we like explored. Um, like, yeah, do, do you use node ports? Uh, you know, not obvious at all. <laughs> uh, we, what we ended up doing is uh, there are some uh, there are some relays that are out, already out in public, uh, and we also uh, allow you to run your own relay. Uh, if you do run your own relay, it'll be an additional pod that appears in the cluster, um, and the uh, logic is set up so that uh, you know, like once once you if you are running your own relay, then uh, all the IPFS nodes will be like configured correctly to use it, um, and the and the result is that it works and you didn't have to really think about it or know anything. Um, so hole punching works. Uh, you get 
uh, content that's addressed to the network correctly, uh, using a, a network that is, uh, that is dialable, and also you're not doing something silly like spinning up a bunch of load balancers and using up all your uh, IP addresses. Uh, so that's really good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let, let the operator operate. Uh, all this stuff gets set up for you. You didn't have to think about anything. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that, that uh, the operator handles is uh, changes to the cluster after it's been created. So uh, let's say, let me just go over here. kubectl. Get, get a list of my IPFS uh, clusters. Uh, let's look, let's edit this collab cluster. Uh, let's edit IPFS collab. Okay. <laughs> uh, this would look a lot better if, uh, it was a little bit smaller maybe. Yeah. Let, let's say we're running out of storage. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't need four. We don't, we only have four replicas right now, but let's make it six. Uh, oh, of course. Of course, there's going to be a bug. <laughs> let me let me edit the other one. <laughs> yeah. So this one, this one, I was doing a uh, hundred, but you know, you probably this will probably not be as obvious. But yeah, I'll make it like one ten or something like that. <laughs> uh, but. It'll, it'll allow you to like adjust parameters on the fly, uh, and it'll just uh, respond and create the thing that you wanted. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the overall point that I'm trying to make. Uh, but what this allows you to do is you can uh, control the cluster through an API programmatically. Uh, yeah, demo. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, let's see. Uh, fingers crossed, indeed. Uh, I wanted to do a quick demonstration. I have this file here, which is uh, hello IPFS uh, cluster or IPFS cluster CTL. Uh, if we add this file, <laughs> okay, we get a, a CID back. It's pinning uh, uh, .io. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. So now we're now we're onto the roadmap section. I've only got like a, a couple minutes here. Uh, there's a uh, there's a, a great diagram here for basically uh, how to judge any uh, Kubernetes operator. Uh, this is uh, I think comes from uh, Red Hat's documentation. Uh, I, we're we're not all the way up to uh, level five yet, <laughs> so uh, uh, we're uh, this is still very much in active development. Uh, it's uh, in fact not even really released yet, but uh, we are uh, working our way through to make it so that it's more capable, uh, more more able to like handle the entire lifecycle of of the service. Uh, so the. All the all the lists on this uh, 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 capability map are on the roadmap. Uh, in the in the next couple of weeks, uh, we are going to uh, push at least like a beta or something onto uh, operatorhub.io. That'll invite people to uh, use it. Um, uh, uh, if you do want to try it, however, uh, there is. Uh, code available on the GitHub repo. Uh, I should have listed it here, but uh, I'll go back to the front of the slide at the end. Um, the the code is available. There are Helm charts that you can use to install it, uh, and uh, or you can uh, run through the instructions and just do like make install, and it, it'll also install into your cluster. Uh, and yeah, expect here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this will this will be on operatorhub.io, which is like a kind of like an app repository type of thing, but for Kubernetes operators. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, I'm Corey on Slack. Uh, there's my email address. Also for anybody here, uh, feel free to contact me or come come walk up and say hi. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs>